This is the most successful creator on TikTok. And although you've probably seen his face, you've definitely never heard his voice. He doesn't speak. Kabi Lame is the second most followed account on TikTok. It feels like Charlie and Addison, everyone would assume they were top one and two. Not if Kabi Lame has anything to say about it, which he doesn't which have anything doesn't, to say about it. He has nothing it. to say about it. He's seen exponential growth in a very short amount of time. And in this video, we're going to tell you exactly why that is. Now, comment below before we start this episode. Did you know Kabi Lame before you clicked on this video? Did you? Did you? So we actually wrote about Kabi Lame in June in the published press, and we wrote that in 30 days, he posted 90 videos amassing 62 million followers. Wow. TikTok, man. That's crazy. Also, if you're just hearing about Kabi now, you could have heard about him in June if you subscribe to the published press. Thepublishpress.com. Just put in your email. Subscribe to the published press. We send out two newsletters every week that covers the latest in the creator economy. That link is in our description. To everyone who doesn't subscribe to the published press. Yeah, hit them. Who do you think you are? First of all, how dare you? Second of all, what Colin said. How Third, yeah. grow up. Right. Fourth, stay a kid forever because it's more fun. Yeah. Fifth, get a grip. All right, Colin, roll the intro. <laughs> Now, if you're not familiar with the type of content that Kabi does, this video should give you a pretty good idea. So basically, he shows a full video that's kind of this weird like life hack video that he finds. And then he kind of reacts to it and shows his version of it. He pokes fun at people who try and overcomplicate very simple things. So first of all, who is Kabi Lame? And are we saying his name right? Well, his full name is, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but it's Kab Kaban. Caban lame, I believe. You think it's Caban. Like I mean, cabana? again, I, am, I almost guarantee <laughs> that that is not right. Me chiamo Caban, pero abrevio il mio nome in Cabi. You were an Italian major. He's, He's not, not Italian. Italian. He's from Senegal. But he lives in Italy. He lives in Italy. He moved to Italy when he was one years old. Okay. And he's been working from the time that he was very young. He actually grew up in social housing and he had tons of jobs to help provide for his family. Ho fatto il cameriere, ho fatto il lavapiatti, ho fatto un muratore, aiuto cuoco, lavavetri. He's done all types of things. He was a factory worker going into 2020 and lost his job because of the pandemic. So Kabi takes the TikTok and uses the strategy that propels him. Like it's like an accelerant. So March 2020 is actually when he lost his job. By late April of 2021, he became the most followed internet personality in Italy. And he surpassed Gianluca Vacchi, a wealthy businessman. By April 2021, Kabi Lame had 10 million followers. By June, he had 65 million. That's crazy. So why don't we talk a little bit about how his content works and why is it so viral? We have to talk about the fact that it transcends language. He does not speak. So anyone anywhere in the world can watch one of his videos and enjoy it. We talk about this thing called the over the shoulder test, which essentially suggests that if you can look over someone's shoulder who's watching this piece of content and still enjoy it without the sound on, without context, if that works, like if you do enjoy it over someone's shoulder, then it has something in it that can go viral. You've increased your maximum potential audience size. For a show like this, if we turned the sound off, it's not that interesting. Yeah, I mean, look at this. So this show relies on the context. You have to care about the stuff we talk about. You have to understand English and you have to want to sit and watch for long periods of time. So that's completely different from what he does. It's short snippets that don't require language that are visually engaging. The potential audience size just ballooned all the way to anyone in the world. Whereas our show has a potential audience size that's a lot smaller. We were talking about this before we started recording, but his expressions remind us of like a Charlie Chaplin or even mimes mm -hmm. in general. Like being a mime is something that I looked into and it has been around since, not like, because I wanted to oh, be one. Oh, I was one. like, you looked into it for yourself? I was not interested in becoming one. Okay. But I looked into it for the purposes of this show yeah. and it goes back to ancient Greece. But there have been mimes in all types of cultures throughout history. Yeah, he mirrors the silent film actors, the Charlie Chaplins, the Buster Keatons, or even, you know, a more recent time, the Mr. Beans. Or even the Colin and Samir circa 2013. We did make a silent film and we're showing it on the screen right now. We're just going to leave that there without any context. If you can find that on the internet, congrats. 
So long story short, it's all about reducing the barriers of entry and having the maximum number of people that could even watch your videos. I mean, this is something that Mr. Beast is trying to do now by translating and dubbing his content into multiple languages, realizing like to make the biggest impact, to have the largest potential audience size, he has to translate his videos. What's amazing is that Kabi's language is just human expression and that is a universal language. And we'll get to this, but it's even helping him from a business perspective. He does some deals with Netflix mm -hmm. and they can use his content across every different account, whether it's Brazil or Spain, right. it is able to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Another example of this is trick shots. We made a video about this a long time ago, but trick shots, like watching someone throw a ball into a hoop is just visually engaging and fun to watch no matter if the sound is on or off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the second thing is that Kabi is a curator. He's essentially pulling content from TikTok or from the internet, and that gives him an endless supply of ideas because his ideas are based on what the entire internet is uploading. So someone uploads something, he can take that and turn it into one of his reaction videos. One of the most challenging parts of being a creator is coming up with ideas. And when you're a curator, your job is essentially to take what other people are doing, what other people's ideas are, what other people are uploading, and then put your spin on that. So that gives you an influx of ideas, an influx of content for you to put your spin on. This reminds me of America's Funniest Home Videos or Ridiculousness yeah. on MTV. Those shows can go on forever because there will always be funny videos to laugh at. Also, this is a little bit meta, but even right now we are curating for all of you as creators. So we are choosing creators that you should know about. Man, can you imagine if someone's reacting to this video of us reacting to Kabi Lame reacting to other videos? Curating creator economy <laughs> talk show content. So curation as creation, I think is going to be something that continues to pick up in the creator space. It's been around forever, but I think it'll pick up more and more because it's more enjoyable to find these videos through Kabi than it is to find these videos on my own. Like if I found this video on my own and I just watched it and I was like, that's ridiculous. There's no community there's, around there's that. There's nothing yeah. around that. I want a creator to show me and be like, that's dumb. You could just do it like this. And now I'm like, that's funny. Kabi Lame added his personality to that. And that's now I, this makes it enjoyable. And he's the constant. So I get to watch him over and over and over again, even though these videos are changing. I'd rather discover this content through him. And think about how many TikToks are uploaded in a given day. It's a mess. Mm -hmm. We need someone to sift through all these different types of content for us. Right. It's just too much. I think creators will continue to go down this path of, of curation because the internet is so vast that we need hosts to show us what's happening on the internet. Cody Code does a great job at this. I'd rather watch the clip with Cody's commentary than watch the clip on my own because then I have to formulate my own thoughts around it and understand how it fits into the greater context. Who of wants all this. to formulate their own thoughts about anything? Not me. Not you. Not me. I'd rather Cody's no thoughts. No thanks. Yeah. I want to hear someone else's. I'll take Cody's. I'd also take Cody's hair. I think you had Cody's hair at one time. I did. Yeah. I miss it. Okay. <laughs> now, another reason why I think Cobby Lame grew exponentially is because his process for creation is a multiplayer experience. It doesn't rely solely on him. And he talked in an article I read about how his audience will often tag him in a video mm -hmm. that he should be reacting to. So they'll tag him in a video of some ridiculous product or some ridiculous method and then say, Kabi, come here, solve this problem for us, please. I think what's amazing is that TikTok offers the functionality for multiplayer where they have Stitch and Duet, which is suggesting that content is meant to be used and reformatted and recreated over time, right? And yeah. like reinterpreted. It's almost like memes. Memes are multiplayer, right? Like if you see this meme and it has this text on top of it, then someone else takes it for their community and puts totally different text on top of it. And then someone else takes it and puts totally different text. Now that's like, that's become this multiplayer experience where it originated here and then it continues to change. It's not just creators making something for audiences. Everyone is essentially a creator. Mm -hmm. So the days of walking into a movie theater and just sitting and taking in the video are, are over when it comes to social media. We're all there to build upon what's, what's consistently being put out. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it enjoyable too. Because when you're an audience member, you have impact over if you sent a video to Kabi and then he reacts to it, that's really exciting. And probably what's going to happen is that audience members are actually going to create videos for Kabi to 
react to, which I feel like is maybe already happening because some of the things he's reacting to are insane, are ridiculous. Where do these videos come from? They're insane. Like I look at them and I'm like, what was the original purpose of this video? There's one where this girl um, drops her keys underneath a park bench and then takes out like a gadget to like get her keys. And Kavi comes over and just like goes underneath the park bench and grabs the keys. And it's really funny because it's like, yeah, why would you need a gadget to get, you could just reach under. And I'm like, was that, that had, was that a joke initially? That someone made that? Or the zip ties on the, the side of the glass to yeah. turn it into a mug? Granted, I thought that was cool. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. That was I would, one of the better ones, I, I guess. try that. That yeah. was one of the better ones. But it reminds me of um, Unnecessary Inventions, yeah. which is a fantastic Instagram account. I absolutely love it. But he essentially just makes things that are completely unnecessary. And it's really fun to watch because it's like commentary on inventions. But Kabi is also commentary on things that are just overcomplicated, things that are absurd. And also he's, he's doing commentary on the overproduced nature of social media. Yeah. He's basically saying like, Hey, this stuff is like so hyperbolic, so ridiculous. Like influencers. Like, have you lost your mind? Yeah. Just like, really? We need that. I find him to be like the antithesis of it. Yeah. Like something that's just very down to earth. Very like he's the every man. He's the guy who's just like, what are we doing guys? You know? And I think that's really fun. But is there a space for him to make money when you're reacting to other people's content? How does that work for him? How does he develop into a business considering he's yeah. the second most followed person on TikTok? Number one, I think whatever video he reacts to, we're talking about getting 40 million, 60 million views worldwide. If I'm a movie studio, I'm probably like, can you react to a clip of my movie? Yeah, Netflix is already doing that. Yeah. So he works so, with Netflix and he reacts to some of their series. I think you have to think about things with global appeal. Or is it like Starbucks, right? Is there one where like he goes to a Starbucks, they write his name wrong and he's like, and then he writes his name mm. right. And he's like, couldn't you just write it Anything correctly? that you could do. Yeah. That too. And anything that's, you can integrate that's with. global. Like Starbucks is all over the world. McDonald's all over the world. He also, I hate to break it to you like this, but he has one of your dream sponsors. I know, Colin. I know. Barilla. Yeah. Pasta. Yeah. I know. Yeah. When are they going to call? I don't know. I don't know. When Hopefully are they gonna they're call, Hopefully Barilla is watching right now. When are they going to call? It's tough. But sometimes you're kind of a traitor to Barilla because you, you use like a chickpea alternative. No, they have alts. Barilla has alt pasta? They have alt nudes. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you could promote <laughs> their alt nudes. Yeah. So he, he can promote anything that's a video clip that he can react to. I, I really think the Starbucks one is a good one. Like feel free to take that one, Kabi or Starbucks, whoever's listening, because that, that's like universal appeal. It doesn't need language. Everyone in the world knows the experience of getting a cup of coffee at Starbucks. And having your name written out incorrectly. Incorrectly, yeah. Which I think is a massive Which part Starbucks of Starbucks their... should just lean into at this point. No, that is, I think it's, Have they? I think it's their marketing strategy. To mess up your name. Yeah, because then you take a photo of it. Another way that Kabi is monetizing is with his shop, mm -hmm. which is kind of genius because it's just different types of products that oversimplify things in your life but that you also don't really need. That I love. Like it'll be a popcorn maker. Technically you could just use the microwave. So it's kind of like him selling some of the things that he also roasts. Yeah, but I love it because he could roast it and you could just be like, he just gets exposure and you might be like, oh, well, but kinda, maybe you actually want well, I kind of want that. Yeah. And that's the thing is like when you have this much exposure, you just have to think about like what's universal. What's really interesting to me is that he's starting to get featured in fashion. He's like doing ads with Hugo Boss on his TikTok as well. The fashion world just loves TikTokers. Yeah, it's really fascinating that fashion is intersecting with TikTok because Charlie Addison and Kabi, Bella Porch, like all these TikTok creators are getting featured with high fashion brands. Kabi though is very different from them. Oh, completely different. He's a completely different type of creator. So seeing him with Hugo Boss was kind of different and strange, but I think because his face and his reaction, again, he stands for the everyman. Like he is the guy who's just like, all of this is ridiculous. Now he's actually in a sense, extremely relatable. I mean, we're talking about 18 months ago, he was a factory worker. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. What he did with his first level of financial success was buy a new phone so he could film better looking videos. Yeah. His story is really inspiring. The fact that he is so unlike the people around him on that list is super important. Mm -hmm. Just giving that message that you can be anywhere in the world and in a short matter of time, be successful as a creator. And especially when it comes to TikTok, you don't have to be a white 
American girl, which is the majority of when you look at the top of that list, Mm -hmm. that's what's there. So in terms of takeaways from Kabi Lam, I actually think there's takeaways beyond just being a creator. If you're putting anything out there and you want it to have mass appeal, looking at what Kabi's doing is really smart. First and foremost, looking at does your brand transcend language? Is it universally understandable? Is it just a human emotion that people can understand? You're making people laugh. Like that's yeah. the core of it for him. He just liked making people laugh and then wanted and, to do that online. And he took down all the barriers to entry. Just said, anyone can enjoy this comedy. He has a great quote where he says, I just wanted to reach as many people as possible. And the best way to do that was to not speak. That's really good. The second is you don't always have to create something original you might just want to present it in a different way with your spin on it. To an audience that's never seen it before. Exactly. And that's curation. And I think curation, because the internet is so vast now, is a massive phase that we're going to get into here where it's like, help me figure out what to watch. You be the person who brings me the content that I want to watch. Are we the people that brought you Kabi Lame? Did we curate Kabi Lame for you? The third is that audiences don't, just want to watch anymore. They want to create with you. So that means creating a multiplayer experience where people can submit stuff to you, where they can create with you, where even what you're making is attainable, right? Like Kabi Lame, the way he creates content is attainable. You can also create like that. So there's a level of like community that builds around that where everyone wants to see Kabi do something, but you could also do the same thing as Kabi. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. He has a sustainable low lift format that if something happens in the world, if there's a great clip that's out there, he can react to it immediately. Immediately, Yeah. Copy Lame, if you ever find yourself in Los Angeles, we would love to have you on the show. That would be great. But Is he I, on it, Twitter? I don't think he would speak. Would he speak? Would uh, you just say I'm things? Sure he speaks some English what? and he speaks Italian and I can speak some Italian. Okay, so this was a segment for you to say, this I speak Italian. This is called Colin Speaks Italian. Yeah, did you know Colin, Welcome Colin Speaks, Colin Speaks Italian. Italian? So one of the main things to take away from Kabi is how visual his storytelling is. And if you're a creator or a business that wants to enhance the visuals for your content, then we want to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Storyblocks. Storyblocks has been supporting our channel for years now. With Storyblocks Unlimited All Access Plan, they have literally everything you would need to tell a story. From videos to music to sound effects and even after effects templates, Storyblocks has everything you need to make a video. They also have a really wide range of stock footage. Colin, throw out a word. Slug. Slug. Is that because of my shirt? Yes. Okay. Check out this slug that we found on Storyblocks. But you may have noticed, even when we talked about Kabi being from Italy, we were able to get a shot from Northern Italy where he's from. Storyblocks has been working to make their library more diverse, and they have an initiative called Restock. And as of today, actually, October 11th, as a part of this initiative, they are releasing a new round of collections centered around indigenous communities. And now I love this. Storyblocks is working to make their library more inclusive and just make online video in general more diverse and more inclusive, which is awesome. Storyblocks supports us and creators like us, so we hope that you go and support them too. Head to storyblocks.com slash Colin and Samir and check out Storyblocks. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get to 500,000 subscribers. That's the new goal. That's half a million. Yes, that is half a million people. All right. Thanks for watching this episode of the Colin and Samir Show. We will see you next week.